Hey, howdy, hey, you got the Rock Doctor here. I'm out on the bike, tooling around the Beaverhead Valley and uh, checking out some of the topography that we see in Southwest Montana, this basin and range topography. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that and how it formed. Beautiful day out here, looking to the southeast at a northwest trending range called the Blacktail Deer Range, uh, just to the south of Dillon. That's the Beaverhead River in the foreground. And uh, what's going on in short is that uh, the, air, the area is extending. And as it extends, it creates basin range topography. So that range is up relative to the valley going down. And uh, the mechanism for all of this appears to be uh, the plate moving over the Yellowstone hotspot. Um, over time, as the uh, North American plate moved to the southwest over the Yellowstone hotspot, the ground thermally expanded up and created uh, uh, drainages to the northeast. And we can still see the gravels up in the top of that mountain range from that old river system. But starting around four and a half million years ago, the movement of the plate uh, moved the relative position of the hot spot to its present position. And all that domed up crust in Southwest Montana collapsed and it created a basin range topography as a result. All right, well, one of the things that you notice about the range is how steep the front of the mountain range is. That's a function of how young it is. Uh, the longer uh, that range has been there, the more it would have been eroded back. And because it has such a steep mountain front, that reflects uh, the rapid uplift of the range relative to the valley, down dropping, and uh, it produces a very steep, fault line scarp, which is not the fault scarp of the plane of the fault, but the weathered back um, plane of the fault. And you can see it hasn't weathered back very much, it's very steep front. So as a geologist, I look at that and say, ooh, that is a very uh, scary uh, looking natural hazard for the Dillon community, most of which is built out of unreinforced rock and brick structures, especially in the downtown and the Montana Western campus. And so if we were to crack, say, a seven, seven and a half magnitude earthquake on that uh, fault that runs along the front of the range, uh, that would be uh, a uh, very bad thing uh, for the building structures in the Dillon community. So we have a significant seismic hazard in Southwest Montana. And it's something that we should be paying attention to and incorporating into our uh, hazard planning for the community as it expands and grows. All right, as I zoom in on the range, one of the things that you notice also is that the tree line is extremely abrupt along the range. The range faces to the north, and uh, so it has a north aspect and it's growing trees, but why would the trees just end abruptly coming down that slope? Well, the reason is that that's a transition from hard rock to alluvial fans and water 
uh, gets trapped in the cracks and fractures and rocks and makes for a good place for trees and, and uh, bushes and so on to grow. But as soon as it hits the porous and permeable alluvial fans, well, then it seeps down into that and it goes away into the subsurface where it's no longer available for uh, plants to access and grow. And so all you get is grass as a result, creating a very sharp tree line along the boundary between exposed hard rock and alluvial fans along the front of the range. And you'll see this in many of the mountain ranges in southwest Montana. Well, I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about the basin range topography in southwest Montana, specifically in the Dillon area. I'm going to head on up to these Eocene volcanic rocks called the Dillon Volcanics, and we'll uh, cut another episode on those rocks and how they formed. Thanks for joining the Rock Doctor. Take care. Have a great day.